Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, let me introduce the, the session, uh, the Professor Huang and Professor Wu, and uh, the, our guest online is Yan, Kana, and Kim. Hello. Hi, hello. Uh, welcome to this panel. And I'm Jun Huang from National Jiao Tong University. And we know that this panel will be given in English because uh, we have three good friends from uh, Japan, from Korea, and from the United States. So uh, let me brief, briefly introduce our uh, panelists. So first, uh, I would like to introduce Professor Wu. Uh, so Professor Wu is a distinguished professor in National Taiwan University of Science and Technology. And I believe that he is the most uh, senior researcher and uh, uh, educator in, in the area of security in Taiwan. And actually, he is the chief leader of the project like ISIP and the AS3 program in Taiwan. And uh, basically, all of us are working under his supervision. Let's welcome Professor Wu. Yeah, thank you. Hi, everybody. And the next one, I would like to introduce Professor Kim. Professor King is now with the Department of Cybersecurity Department in Korea University. And I think he is very famous because uh, he is the um, advisor of the CYCOR uh, CTF team. And we know that CYCOR has won twice in the DEF CON CTF champion. So let's welcome Professor Kim. So thanks for inviting me. Thank you. And the next one I would like to introduce is Kana. Okay, so Kana is one good friend of Hikang. Uh, she has participated in Hikang for several years, and unfortunately this time we can only have her virtually in this event, so we cannot <laughs> see her in, in, in physically in the event. And uh, Kana is very important in the security community in Japan. So for example, we have a second event, and we have Koblu event. Uh, these events are basically organized by Kana. So uh, this also welcome Kana. Hello. So, Kana, would you like to say more to, to our audiences? <laughs> more than hello, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, so honored to be here uh, with, uh, you know, great panelists. And then the first KeepCon was, for me, is 2010, 10 years ago. So now it's growing and growing. So congratulations, KeepCon, and the succeeding of the, you know, hybrid conference. Thank you. Thank you. And the last one I would like to introduce is uh, Yang. Uh, Yang is a professor. Yang is a professor in Arizona State University, and he is also lead the well, the order of the overflow, the, CT, the, the, the organizer of the current DEFCON CTF in the world. So, if you already played CTF for several years, maybe you have heard about a tool called Anger, and actually. He's the project leader of the Anger. So I believe if you already play with CTF, you should, or you must know uh, Professor Yang or the others in, in, the, in the internet. So uh, let's welcome Professor Yang. Thank you. It's amazing to be here, virtually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I was there in person. OK, that's great. So actually, Yang has joined uh, Hikan um, event this year. So actually, we have a physical meeting this year, and he also contribute and make some big important announcement in the event. So he, he just, uh, last year, he last year he announced an uh, online CTF, the trading course. I remember. <laughs> yeah, Pone College. I actually talked yeah. about it this year. Now it's uh, videos and everything. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so that's great. So I think uh, you have run Pound College for one, one year, so maybe you can share more experiences about running such an online course with us in this panel. So the topic we have this year for this panel is the uh, opportunities and the challenges for security trainings and events in the era or in the post era of, of COVID-19. So I think we can start the discussion. So I would like to pass my mic to uh, Aidan for the first question. Okay, the first question we would like to ask of you, the, we all know that the COVID-19 has made a great social impact and uh, changed the way of communication. Even DEF CON CTF 
has held virtually. I would like to uh, ask how we can arrange uh, online events such as a meeting or courses. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Kim, can you uh, take the first? Show? Thank you. Ah uh, yes, thank you. Yes, uh, I think that it is a huge advantage to listen to the very high quality presentations and trainings by online at a low price. <laughs> I think that is oh. very good. And <laughs> Also, it is even better to be able to save a, a flight fee and hotel fees. <laughs> I think that is a very good point. But, but in the case of education, accompanied by the uh, experiment and the uh, practice, online has uh, some limitations. And furthermore, in case of the uh, online presentations with the education, there is always a risk of the uh, illegal recording. Okay, okay. So it is a very dangerous practice for the uh, presenters and also the educators. educators. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, the reason we attend the conference is not just to the, listen to the presentation or trainings, but also we want to meet the people and inspire the uh, relationships. Mm -hmm. So how yeah. to solve this in uh, virtual space is uh, our future homework to be solved in the future, I think so. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Kana, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, very similar. Yeah, we, we have, uh, uh, I mean, similar challenges too. Uh, actually, you know, since COVID-19, now when was it? It's uh, February or March? Yeah, it was February. I had the GCC event during the COVID-19, yeah, under the COVID-19 situation. So we have uh, eight countries, you know, uh, students from eight countries gathering in Tokyo. That was a hard decision to make it. But anyway, so for me, it's been over six months ago, but it, it, for me, it's more, more years. Like I, I, I was, I'm thinking about it for years already. I feel like it. So, but first I was thinking, what is co uh, conference providing? Like uh, Kim Sese said, and what the what attendees are wanting. And then the, the big thing is accidental encounter, like meeting people. So we are giving the, you know, inter interesting talks and a contest and a workshop party and coffee, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a place to meet people. So um they find a friends business partners and their friends in lifetime too so that's the reason why the sponsors want to sponsor and then join the event mm -hmm. so this is really hard to make it happen but i try uh the best to make the place everybody can you know uh network and talk to each other our platform yeah our call blue is uh, will be in next month and uh, we use uh, some kind of platform that that is uh, easier to uh, network people. Okay. Yeah, and then also watching the movies uh, on the multiple trucks. And also, now another issue is <laughs> that we are facing is the less submission, you know, small number of submissions because speaker cannot travel to Tokyo. They submit the papers because they want to come to Tokyo. And have yeah. fun. <laughs> and if there's no stays, there's no Tokyo trip. Why? Why have to submit the paper? So we don't have many papers, but um, instead of the, you know, Tokyo travel, we give them like a uh, honorium, you know, payments. We, we promise, like we give them like up to 1,000 US dollars for one session. So and we had we the small number of the session uh submissions but we have more serious content this year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it'll be good <laughs> okay yeah and then okay. also we make it the free entry mm -hmm. because sponsor wants it okay i would yeah. also like to go to uh, tokyo 
<laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about it. I'm sorry Especially about it. Especially next, Yen. Uh, this is uh, the first time I didn't go to the Def Con this year. I didn't. Yeah. I yeah. expect so much, but uh, because the 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 COVID nineteen, so we can. It, it is, yeah. Yeah. It, it, what it, what do you think? It Yen? Online, but, it, but that's an interesting thing about Def Con. Actually, um, Def Con moved to Discord this year. Uh, for the platform, and I was actually shocked at how well that worked. Um, there were hundreds and hundreds of channels for all the villages and everything, and scrolling through those channels, I remarked to to uh, Dark Tangent, scrolling through those channels felt very, very similar to walking through the hallways of the mm. hotel. Oh. Um, oh. So it, 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 it kind of uh, got close to capturing some sort of an in-person feel um, it, 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 which is interesting and made certain things easier in organizing uh, an event like DEF CON CTF. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, uh, well, from the incentive for, for uh, the speakers, maybe we do not have chances to travel to different countries. But I think mm -hmm. if we have this event online, maybe we can increase the capacity of this event. So uh, mm -hmm. do you have any observations on maybe the number of uh, issues or number of speakers uh, increased due in the event you uh, organized? Mm -hmm. that, that will be the, the question five. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question about? No. The increase attending? No, yeah? the increase, the, the increasing the, the audience. Speak. Number of the speakers? Increased? Uh, number of speaker. Uh, we oh. could, but yeah, we could, but uh, uh, if, if I can answer, I, it, we could have the more sessions, more tracks, because it's virtual, no limitation of the spaces, but, um, but I think of the qualities too. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, I think yeah, a fine. potential win is like streaming out on, onto Twitch and so forth. Um, or other streaming platforms, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's tricky. I think this, um, you know, going to the event is a is a very big draw, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. That's right. Okay, so uh, we can move to the next question. So okay. um, we would like to ask Kim, Kana, and especially Yan about the. Um, Contest online. So, uh, so what is the difference? Uh, do you think that the contest moved from uh, on site to online? So, what will be the biggest uh, change or impact to the players? Uh, could you please share your experience with us? So maybe we can start from here. Sure. Me, you, you question is uh, uh, the you mean the. Uh, the what is the difference between the uh, previous contest yeah, yeah. and the yeah. virtual CTF? Is that right? I think so. Yes. Yes. For, for okay. contest, for yeah, example, yes. for CTF. Okay. Okay. I have. Uh, I think that uh, there are two advantages and two drawbacks. I think so. Okay. Uh, advantages. Uh, the first one is that uh, CTF is a team sport, team competition. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, for the students, there is a big burden because uh, all team members should move from uh, South Korea to the uh, Las Vegas or the other uh, foreign countries. So we should make money for the flight fee and the so accommodations. But in, in virtual CDF, there is uh, no that kind of burdens. So I think that uh, it's uh, that expensive. So virtual CDF. Uh, is very good for the uh, students, mm -hmm. for the uh, poor students. <laughs> the second one, second thing, is I think that uh, in the in case of the previous uh, real city, uh, it is very hard to communicate among team members because there are so big noise and music in the field. But but in virtual city, there are there are no that kind of noise. So it is very easy to communicate with our team members. Yeah. So I think that uh, that is the advantages, two advantages. But mm -hmm. there are also drawbacks. The first one is that uh, from the view of the organizers, there is a problem of how to prevent 
cheating and how to manage the huge number of uh, VPN traffic. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, drawbacks uh, 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 from the perspective of the organizations, uh, organizers. And the second drawback is that uh, I think that uh, most of our uh, CTF team members, our students, think that I, can, I cannot feel like the real finals. Yes. It's just a, a virtual one. So there is a, this disadvantage that the uh, fun and motivation to participate the city are uh, very low okay. compared to with the real city. I think so. Yeah, I, I, I definitely felt that from the organizer side of things, <laughs> absolutely. Um, when uh, we organized our first DEF CON CTF, we had a player um, on PPP that uh, hacked so hard that they passed out at the table, right? And that's just much harder to, uh, not that that's a good thing, hopefully, uh, luckily we haven't had any other uh, medical emergencies at, at uh, DEF CON CTF um, since, but it's not as, um, it just shows how, how motivating being there at the table in person can be. Um, and I've, I've heard from many people that it's it's much harder to capture that. But like like you just said, right? Um, if, if you're virtual, um, I, I'd add uh, another um, unexpected bonus. One thing that is very hard for us as organizers every year, um, as uh, you know, with DEF CON being such a public event, is engaging with the audience because usually we're, we're way too busy to, you know, let's say we, we, we could have an, a talk at DEF CON, but then you would have to leave um, the CTF area to go to a room to talk to people, right? And that's just, we can't devote the time to that. Um, and it's hard to know, you know, if there'll be an emergency at the time um, and we'll have to cancel it and so forth. But what we did this year, um, because it was virtual, was um, have, um, public CTF uh, kind of uh, report, like whatever, a, a state of the CTF report every day um, during DEF CON, open to the public. We, we uh, did in a specific Discord channel that anyone could jump into and we uh, streamed it onto Twitch. And um, the public engaged with that in a way that uh, we haven't seen, you know, spectators directly engage with um, the the CTF finals in a long time, mm -hmm. um, so that was that was a definite uh, opportunity. I think that that we were able to take advantage of. Yeah. And how about Kana? Me, the Kim sensei and the Yang said everything. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the, especially the organizer side, it's hard. You know, player yeah. side, there is online. They have experiences, but the organizing the CTF is, you know, organizing CTF, everybody is different rooms or different places. It's a little bit hard. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, for, especially in that sense, because uh, organize uh, when you organize, like the run up to the event is just insane. There's an, always an enormous thing to be done, uh, enormous amount of things to be done that, that end up piling up and you don't sleep the, the last couple of days and so forth. <laughs> And it's not so bad when um, everyone is in person and you can go and wake someone up yeah, if there's right. a, you know, yes. if you need to yeah. launch their challenge. Yes. But at DEF CON, we were going to launch a challenge and we, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the person who wrote that challenge was asleep yeah. and we couldn't wake them up. Like we'd be <laughs> right. calling, texting, right. messaging, yes. everything. They're yes. sleeping yes. With, with their phone on silent yes. by accident. Yeah. It's not um, only about CTA, but the conference speakers too. You know, conference yes. speaker in the different <laughs> different time zone, or drunk. Uh, and yeah. uh, you know, I I I always use a hotel close to the you know venue because I can knock on the door and wake them up. But uh, mm -hmm. this okay. time, no way. It's it's gonna be accident. I mean. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one time, I think the first time I spoke at at uh, HitCon, I flew in. Uh, my flight got delayed and landed like an hour before the uh, wow. the talk, right? <laughs> and and I remember everyone was very very stressed and rightfully so. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and but it's it, like that, but for everybody, yeah. right? You yeah. don't know who will be there, who won't. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, also, uh, also yeah. in case of the uh, DevCon, uh, in my case, I should wake up all day long. In the night, I should participate in uh, DevCon and Black Hat. Yeah. And in, in the morning and afternoon, I should go to my school to work. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I should wake up all day long. It's yeah. a very hard job for, my, for me and also to my students. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, it's crazy. Uh, okay, Yen. Uh, uh, Kim just mentioned about the cheating. Uh, I want to know uh, what do you think? What kind of the cheating will be if the the the, the challenge the, the the CTF is held online? Uh, so it, there is uh, one difference, one major difference um, from the perspective of cheating, and that is when we hold DefCon in person, um, everyone gets a network cable, and every packet that goes through our um, uh, network more or less we can tell what team it's coming from. When things are held virtually, um, for the most part, you can. But for example, during uh, the game, uh, there was a brief period where someone's, uh, we gave each team a virtual machine um, that was pre-connected to the network mm -hmm. uh, with, with all the VPN configuration done for them. And someone's machine got uh, DDoSed, right? Or at least went down several times um, and it's, since it's all on the open internet, it's much harder to understand who is doing what, right? You can, you know, check, okay, what IPs is this coming from? But uh, realistically, that could still be anybody, right? It's IP and IP in, you know, the Western United States, probably an Amazon uh, <laughs> server that it, anyone could just spin up. Okay. Um, so from that perspective, um, network DOS and, and um, it, it was a little more chaotic. Mm -hmm. I think otherwise the CTF community has gotten um, quite good about um, not cheating or at least, you know, uh, figuring out ways to, to stop cheating. Um, there are CTFs, online CTFs, where every, for example, Hackasat, every flag um, was customized to the specific team that was trying to solve the challenge. So flag sharing, they could catch that way. Okay. Um, and then a couple other things. I don't think it's that big a problem. Uh, for, but of course, you can't limit team size anymore if you wanted to in the first place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that will be the uh, the, the third question. <laughs> yeah. uh, Yen and Kim, one of you is the organizer. Uh, the other one was the was once the champion. Uh, Kim, uh, we, uh, what do you think? Uh, of the China team winning the contest this year, <laughs> they are they are, so, they are the first place, right? Yeah, yeah. A A A zero E won first place um, in a in an incredibly tight battle um, against PPP right up until the very end. I mean, they were switching positions yeah. uh, so frequently it was insane to watch. Um, I. Uh, Way back when, when when Oops, one of the teams that later became part of uh, A Zero E, um, was first starting out, I went and um, to to OCTF and gave a talk, uh, the the whatever opening ceremonies. And I in the opening ceremonies, I said, you know, packets don't care about national boundaries. We're all hackers, and this isn't, you know, it's not Chinese hackers. Uh, American hackers, Taiwanese hackers, Japanese hackers, it's hackers, right? Uh, if you get a bunch of everybody in a room, for example, at the after parties at DEF CON CTF, uh, everyone is just hanging out. You, there aren't like these clumps of, of countries and so forth. So from that perspective, I'm very passionate about um, continuing to ensure that DEF CON CTF represents a, a global hacking community. Um, that's why I try to um, argue internally and, 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 and we as a team try to ensure that the qualifying events, um, you know, spread out. No uh, uh, individual like hacking community of one single uh, locality gets too much, um, you know, all like all of the 
three qualifiers or something. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it was very awesome to see um, kind of uh, more diversity among the winners. That was uh, very cool. I, I, I respect, of course, everyone at the top of that scoreboard is incredible. Um, but, you know, the more as we go back in, in, in time, the more we say, okay, uh, this country, this country, this country, this country, rather than saying, you know, one, uh, the, the same uh, country over and over, that I think is valuable for the um, global cybersecurity community. Mm -hmm. one, one day we'll see Taiwan at the top there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Kim, what do you think? Uh, I think uh, the AOE, uh, the, their sponsors, uh, uh, they, they have a lot of sponsors. So mm -hmm. they they so they have the fourteen fourteen together. So what do you think? You are the <laughs> you you took the two champion. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember it's a uh, twenty fifteen and uh, twenty eighteen, right? Yes, that's right. Okay, okay. What do you think? The China team winning uh, this 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 year? Yeah, I I think that. Uh, Whenever, uh, as you know well, uh, I'm a, I'm, I am a uh, Liviu board member of the Black Hat Asia. So, whenever I leave you the uh, submissions in Black Hat, I always think I always feel that the quality of the submissions from China is very high, and the subject of the submissions are also very diverse. And also, the Chinese team tends to uh, be very persistent in conducting the research mm -hmm. once they started. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, this is possible because there are a huge number of the people and there are so big uh, budgets for supporting that. I think that uh, CDF is same as the, uh, as the case of the briefing sessions. I think so. Okay. Okay. What, what do you think, uh, Professor Wu? Yeah, I think that um, such an online CTF game is just um, uh, like you listen to the radio, the music, right? Uh, it's not so excited. So, but you, but you listen to the music, you can say, oh, this is a very uh, lovely song from China, from Korea, from Japan. But if you want to say, uh, who is the most famous singer or the most outstanding singer in such cases, then you can recognize who is who. So I think, uh, actually, I, I encourage our students uh, to uh, participate um, uh, not just on site the game, uh, not just on the future, because on the future is uh, just a virtual world. Uh, there are so many, uh, you know, so many skills that you can cheat or you, you can uh, uh, get a, a lot of uh, people, a lot of students just for a supporting team, not in the real side. Actually, uh, a real side uh, computation has a very good, important uh, value that is the social coherence. Uh, social coherence, that means that uh, you, you can um, participate in such games, such prayers with the other com from the other countries to make good friends. Cybersecurity is not just a problem from one country. Cybersecurity yeah. is all over the world, right? So we need to uh, have uh, good friends, good partners, and uh, social coherence to just to against or such uh, security or cybersecurity uh, stress in the world. Yeah. So, and that actually, I I, yeah, <laughs> actually, I, I love and I encourage my students to encourage just on site prayers. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think that's a very important thing that is missing and that we haven't figured out how to um, duplicate for these high level, you know, yeah. finals in person <clears throat> events. Um, I don't think anyone from the US got, you know, became friends with anyone from outside the US just from DEF CON finals, whereas from previous ones, that was happening. You know, but with them going virtual is much harder. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.
So, so I think the conclusion for this problem may be that the party is the most important part of the CTF competitions yeah. instead of the counter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <true. Fine>. Absolutely. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay, but in terms of the effort you ha you have to organize the event, uh, do you think um, you will prefer to have an online event next year or uh, on site event? <laughs> do we have do choices? Do you? Uh, <laughs> well, well, well uh, we're not sure, but maybe we do not have choices. But if we have chances to make the decision, so what will be your preference? On site. <laughs> in, in person, it'll be it'll be awesome. It's more work, um, or at least different work, but it 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 it's worth it. It's worth it for yeah. the community. Mm -hmm. You have the after party. I I have life to outside. Ah, <laughs> exactly. the after party. The after party. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so maybe we can looking forward for the vaccine next year. So maybe we can have the vaccine and then. <laughs> Go abroad for uh, mm -hmm. on-site events. Okay. So for me, first time to see the uh, CTF party after the CTF is in Korea. Oh. I think a uh, yeah, long time ago, and I saw it. And then uh, players don't talk much before CTF, <laughs> but uh, they talk each other. How do you solve it? How do you solve it? Uh, in the after party. So that yeah. that was uh, that was a moment. I oh my god, this is cool. Uh, you know, this is how we meet the people. Mm -hmm. This, yeah. this kind of talented student don't talk much. They don't have, you know, they're, they're shy. But uh, after the city, they talk a lot. Even, you know, they, who, who's afraid of speaking English, they speak and they, he, they show the screen and this is how I do and something like that. So, oh, that was amazing. I learned from Korean city. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I think we can move to uh, the next yeah. question. So uh, for the next problem, uh, I would like to ask Professor Wu and Yang. So I, I believe that you already have a lot of experiences on online courses. So um, do you think the COVID-19 bring any um, opportunities or challenges to cybersecurity education online? So maybe you can share the experiences with us. Yeah, actually, I, I did not have uh, so much uh, experiences uh, uh, in online teaching, because uh, I, uh, I I do not like to online teaching because uh, when when you are teaching in the class, you can watch the you know you can watch and the, you 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 watch the, the looks and some feelings uh, from students and uh, what what they are uh, want to or they are looking forward to uh, what you have told them. And so I, I think that that is the that, that's why we we need have a classroom, not have a TV in the classroom, right? We need classroom. We need such climate uh, for education. So uh, actually, I I I do not accept <laughs> online teaching in my university. <laughs> it, it, yeah. Can, can you sorry? Uh, I have saw a, a video that uh, uh, when the teacher. Uh, they are teach online, and the student uh, use the uh, 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 a video on the handset and uh, fix on the cam before the camera. So the the teacher thought they are still uh, yes. take ed education. Yeah, I think there are so many problems <laughs> uh, uh, in classroom. For example, and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, teachers uh, say teachers say that, that they, they may be violated their freedom of teaching. You know, but what it means uh, freedom of teaching because I want to teach, and I want to teach depends on the feeling, the climate in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Not just uh, listen to the radio, okay, or well, not just uh, watching the video online. I think that's a different climate for learning. So learning when we are you learning for enjoying, learning for enjoying that means that you just involved in such crime. So that if we are have a happy learning, not just in learning for application because you need credits, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that's that's uh, in the last uh, semester, I I cannot I refuse to uh, teach online. Yeah, I insist. So every student uh, they wear a mask <laughs> in the classroom. 
And it is very hard for me to talk uh, more than two hours wearing mask. But I enjoy, I, I just looking for their eyes, not for their mm. <laughs> full feelings, you know, not, not just their face in, 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 in the students. Mm. But I enjoy that climate. Yeah. So that's one opinion. So, but how about Yang? So you have run the punk college for maybe more than one year. So yeah, have, and, do you have so, any so, so let, me, let me start with. Yeah, can you can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can yeah. hear you. Perfect, awesome. Let me start with a kind of an analogy. Um, when eBooks came out, right, and people started reading on their screens, um, there are there were a lot of people, and there still are people that say, okay, but I. That paper book, the the sensation of turning pages, the way that the light doesn't light up in my face, but uh, it reflects off the book, that's an integral part of reading, right? Um, and there that is true for a lot of people and and um, you know, no physical books uh, are there for them, but for many other people, um for a, a huge amount of um, avid readers, the uh, ebooks are a great solution and it, they enable access to incredibly wide ranges of reading material, right? Imagine COVID without ebooks. Um, I mean, I have, uh, you know, books in my house, but I would quickly uh, run out. In a similar way, um, I, I had this, the same kind of um, concerns as, as, as Professor Wu uh, as well. Um, I, I was worried that I, I build off of my students' energy a lot. Um, I try to have a, a teaching style that's very dynamic, very excited, um, but it's very hard when there's no one sharing that excitement. Um, and I didn't know how I would move that online. So that was one thing that I would say. A second thing I would say is um, the best way to run a CTF, for example, is to run a CTF. If you if you don't have the CTF deadline coming at you, you will never be ready to run a CTF, right? But you know, as the CTF gets closer, you realize okay, you have no choice but to put in insane amounts of work and get it finished. And 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 COVID did something similar for me for online uh, teaching. Um, when COVID hit, and it hit um, Arizona very very hard, uh, maybe a month or two ago, right? We had a huge explosion and um, ASU just said, look, most classes are going to be online and, and we need to prepare. So we had no choice. And so then you, you sit down and you think, okay, how can I make this work? And I had already launched Pwn College one year ago at HitCon. And Pwn College is what I was calling a um, white belt to yellow belt cybersecurity education platform. You start Pwn College knowing Nothing about security, but good fundamental concepts. Um, maybe you, ideally, you know, x86 assembly, just not, you know, how to inject it into processes. And then by the time you're you're through uh, Pwn College, you um, now know uh, a lot of the basic concepts of, of hacking. You know, you understand memory corruption. You can reverse engineer binaries. You understand how kernel uh, vulnerabilities arise and how kernel exploitation works, these sort of things. And I put the challenge problems in my lecture slides and I launched them publicly for the internet last year. And, and a lot of people went and, and um, uh, Pwn College is, is based on this concept of practice makes perfect. There are literally hundreds of challenge problems um, for a student to do start to finish. Um, and they, they get slowly harder. And a lot of the challenge problems um, actually teach the students how to complete them um, and, and so forth. And then um, my goal was always to launch videos, right? Because the lecture slides, the, they're just not good on their own, right? You need uh, a teacher to, to, to teach. Um, otherwise, we'd all be out of jobs, at least in academia, and we'd just have <laughs> lecture slides everywhere, right? Be replaced <laughs> yeah. by Google spreadsheets or Google Slides. Um, and so um, what ended up uh, happening is I was just too busy to record those videos. And I was thinking, OK, I will record them and uh, launch Pwn College uh, videos, um, uh, you know, the, the, the Pwn College 1.0 um, 
you know, right before DEF CON. And that, of course, didn't happen because we were preparing DEF CON. And then, uh, but, but, you know, and, and, and uh, what finally forced me to create videos on Poem College was having to move my class online. And I realized, okay, my class is gonna be online anyways. I will make Poem College and my class the same thing. So I, uh, as, as the semester progresses, I launch more and more videos and I record them um, not in one long lecture because that's impossible to maintain the energy without the presence of students. I um, record them in uh, tiny conceptual parts. So I split my lectures out. Um, I've gotten better at this throughout the semester. Uh, for example, last week we covered sandboxing and sandbox escape and every video is like 15 minutes long. And a, I can sit down and I can maintain enthusiasm and excitement for the whole video. And a student can sit down and watch it and absorb those um, uh, concepts while they you know, go on with their day and then go and watch the next 15 minute video. Um, and then the other thing that I do with student engagement is I stream live on Twitch my office hours for the whole world to join and my, um, uh, instead of like a normally scheduled lecture because everything is recorded and, 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 and put online ahead of time, I run an extended question and answer and demo session also live on Twitch. And so a lot of my students, they show up on Twitch and, and on Twitch, it's a different kind of feedback, but there is feedback. There's the Twitch chat that goes next to your video and students can, can chat and, and um, you know, post memes and there's all, it, it's a very different type of classroom environment, but it is a classroom environment. It's just happening online. And you can see that in real time and you can, you know, take questions and so forth and it works. Um, and then the awesome thing is all of this is also recorded. So if you go to poem.college, we're now launching videos. Every week we launch a new module of videos. Um, and, and it's, uh, Alongside those videos on our YouTube channel, we have the extended Q and A, and then the the office hours and so forth. Um, I think it's working for students. They can go back, they can watch these concepts um, during the the um, lecture. They can, you know, interact with the lecturer in, in funny ways on Twitch. Um, it's definitely not the same. It's definitely a very very different experience, but it it is the virtual equivalent of a classroom that I think works fairly well. And there's one more thing. Um, the big, big challenge is um, group activities, right? So I wanted this year, at the end of every class, I wanted one hour where the students could work together on challenge problems, right? Like a mini CTF and maybe they'll team up into groups and then uh, naturally they'll start racing each other, for example, or something along these lines. Um, and that's very hard to do online. But again, after DEF CON moved to Discord, and I saw that maybe there's something to this, I created a Discord server for the whole class. And so for one hour, everyone piles into Discord, and they're all on different voice channels talking about you know, how they're solving these problems and so forth, and it, it works. It's uh, last week for, uh, when we launched, or last week, two, two days ago when we launched the shell coding challenges, the shell coding module, we, uh, I saw two students racing each other to the top. Um, during that hour, they managed to solve every uh, challenge we released. Um, we had to release more challenges. Uh, so it, 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 it works. It's a very different online experience. Um, or it's a very different educational experiment, experience. But so far, I think the, uh, con the, the, the content is making a good transition. That's very good sharing. Thank you. Well, I, yeah. be I believe that uh, maybe it doesn't matter if we have the courses online or on site, but it depends on the attitude of the students. So maybe we know that there are some data driven students. So even if you yes. have many videos online, uh, well, they, they do not pay for more time to uh, yeah. looking for the videos. So. And, and, and so, some, um, so, some, Readers still don't want to read on on an ebook or can't. You know, they just they just don't relate to that as well as paper books. And I don't think we'll get rid of in-person schooling. I mean, once the the virus uh, is is uh, dealt with, but um, I think this sort of education model is here to stay. The other nice thing is 
once it happens, like I'm recording all of these videos, uh, those concepts stay relevant for a while, not forever. I'll have to re-record them in, in a couple of years, for example, especially things like heap uh, exploitation changes constantly. Um, but the videos that are up on YouTube, uh, they're, they're, they're there for people to learn even when I'm not teaching, which is a very um, exciting thing as an educator. Okay, thank you for your sharing. I think we have one last question, so. Okay, uh, I would like to ask all of you, uh, the Black Hat this time has held virtually. As the organizer, do you think we have any way to increase in their audience? Also, uh, okay, the f just for the first question. Uh, how, any way we can increase, in the, increase the audience? Uh, 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 Kana, mm -hmm. can you take uh, take it f first? Sure. Um, actually, it is increased maybe because uh, um, we make it a free entry, free admission. Maybe because of it, but we don't show the program list yet. We don't, you know, publish the speaker list yet. But we have more than. 1500 registrations already <clears throat> so it shows uh how you know how much they are expecting you know the cold blue mm -hmm. some people cannot you know take uh, come to the cold blue because of the price or because of the uh i don't know distance uh time but they can you know listen to the sessions okay from home now so it's it is increasing and interestingly i don't know female is more active mm -hmm. online okay and, um not all the places but i see some you know differences like um for example like a uh, is calling for the communities but the first submitter is the female and then she, uh, that, that was a female community who wants to uh, make more female speakers on stage. So that, that is good one. And also the other one is at other events. Uh, it's an educational one year education project. And then they're calling for the students and then more female is coming. Even the, you know, the, the number of the, some, uh, Application was decreased, not is was decreased, but the percentage of the female is increased. It's interesting. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kim, yeah. what do you think? Uh, any uh, way yeah. to increase uh, the audience? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, in order to increase the audience, uh, I think that we should uh, we should make uh, some method to strengthen the relationship between people and people because uh, uh, many uh, hacking people hacking students uh, want to make some relationship with the great hackers in mm -hmm. in hacking conferences so we should solve these problems uh, in case of some universities and companies try uh, various things like uh, minecraft and, and so on so uh, I think that uh, we can uh, try the uh, uh, virtual uh, hacking uh, conference in Minecraft platforms. In in in, in that uh, platforms, we can uh, meet uh, somebody, some some uh, some avatars in, in Minecraft, and uh, say something to them. So I think that in the future we should make some uh, Minecraft platform. <laughs> for, for open the uh, hacking conferences, I think so. Okay, again. Yeah, I, I think the um, alternate routes of engagement are, are good. We uh, toyed around with um, creating a VR platform for DEF CON <laughs> CTF. Yeah. Right. Um, but in in the end, it's it's just tough to guarantee that everyone has a VR headset, but. You could have, you know, um, like a, a, a he headset that you put a phone in included in the admission cost, for example. Mm -hmm. That that could uh, 
Could work. Um, I, I think Connor's point is uh, a very, very important one. Um, the numbers might be going down, but the question is who is attending, not just how many. Um, if using a virtual setting where either um, people that couldn't afford it mm -hmm. or people that didn't feel comfortable showing up mm -hmm. to an event, right. um, unfortunately, the cybersecurity community is, is not uh, – so widely known for its inclusivity mm -hmm. um, and, and this makes certain people um, it makes it hard for certain people to, to participate. Mm -hmm. If online makes that happen um, that is a huge value to yeah. our community. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. so. Thank you. Totally totally ugly. Totally ugly. So, so this is something we need idea. to investigate and actually amplify um, yeah. even, even post-COVID. That's true. And also if we were talking about the functions of the conference, like a VR or something like that. I really like to have the automatic translations oh, on yeah. chat. You know, uh, Yan speak English and I speak Japanese, Kim Sensei speak uh, Korean, and then you guys, you know, Taiwanese speak Taiwanese on chat. And it's all, all translation on That's each screen. Chat. That's amazingly. Yeah. That's amazing. I love yeah. to have. Mm -hmm. and then One of the most heard, surreal. Do we yeah. have any technologies? Right. I, I heard the PhD <laughs> is has su such a things and uh, it's under the development. But if they provide freely, that that is amazing. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, it's, most... uh, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> no, go ahead, Kana. No, no. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And also the uh, you know old translation for speakers too. We don't have to hire you know in uh, no, 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 expensive translators. You know, you know what? Uh, it's not only Japan, but uh, if we use their voices on YouTube, they charge us twice more. Wow. Yeah, because the, it's uh, it's used. No, uh, they, their voice is only for one time. But if we use it for archive, they charge us twice more. So I really ha like to have the automatic translation on speakers what? and on chat. One of the most surreal experiences I've had in my kind of professional life is um, the panel last year at HitCon, where everyone was speaking in their own language and then you had live translators going in our ears. That was incredible. Um, <laughs> yes, yep. we have. And it's too costly, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's too costly. <laughs> it is cost. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, like Hannah said, if you really enable that, as uh, using these online conferences as a seed, yeah, mm, that is okay. that is a huge value. Yes, so I think yeah. both in, in in conferences and education, um, COVID is a is a big bummer for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but we need to see it not just as a uh, problem, but as a catalyst for solutions. Yeah, right for for kind of the next steps in education. Okay. People have been talking a lot that um, the you know, future of educations, mm -hmm. uh, of education doesn't include universities. Um, I think, I don't know whether it does or not, but I think the future of education has to include a wide scale streaming, archiving to uh, permanent platforms mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, there's a lot of value in that, that we shouldn't abandon mm -hmm. just because we, we get a vaccine in a couple months or whatnot. Okay. The next yeah. question, uh, Yen, uh, what do you think? The COVID-19 will be continue? Uh, do we have the <laughs> DEFCON CTF next year? <laughs> what do you think? We, we will have DEFCON CTF next year and we will I mean, do online. everything uh, uh, I mean, in our per, power in person. to have it in, in, in person. Yeah. Uh, but of course, ultimately, it is uh, up to the Doc Tangent and his uh, <laughs> super elite team of awesome people. Um, but. I, I, I have hopes uh, that it's in person. I miss all of you, you know, in person. I miss you guys. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think uh, we are running out of time, so um, let's thank our pan panelists first. Yeah. Yeah. Yen, Kim, Kana, Yen, thank yeah. you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 You Bye. Also. Thank you so much. Thank you.